And of course, getting into uh, getting beyond the user friendliness and, and making it easier for people to get up to speed faster. Um, I will tell you for a fact that learning Max today for somebody that doesn't know it much or that has never seen it or used it is way faster than it was in the past. Uh, of course, there's a lot of standardization in the user interface that makes it a little similar to some other tools that are more familiar to Autodesk users like AutoCAD and Revit. Uh, but also the way that you generate a rendering today, if you were doing renderings you know, 10 years ago and you know what the process and the and the define workflow would take for getting something from AutoCAD, Revit, or SketchUp, or whatever the modeling tool, into Max and then into a rendering is done uh, is exponentially the way how fast you can put something of high quality and, uh, and and the level of detail that you can get today. So getting to that point and expanding on that, um, the workflow. So most and depending on the firm, depending on the company, depending if it is an artist. That it versus a company that has somebody in house that produces uh, visualization uh, presentations, whether it's rendering stills or uh, animation. Um, a lot of the times, I would say people use Max for just the rendering and animation portion, um, and they use a modeling tool like SketchUp or Revit or AutoCAD. But it, it varies. Um, if you use it for gaming, if you use it for uh, you know movies or even anything that relates to animation, uh, then everything is, can be done inside within. Uh, within 3 Studio Max, including modeling. But let's assume that you use other tools like Revit and SketchUp. Um, on the SketchUp side, something new uh, is uh, it now supports 2015. So you can use SketchUp 2015 format and bring it into 3 Studio Max. There's ways to link it. There's ways to import it. Um, but I would say the biggest one is uh, the Revit support. What that means is that now you have a tighter Revit integration, which was introduced last year. Uh, actually, a couple of years ago, but now it's gotten better and better. Uh, so you can now bring, and this is something that's been tested, you can bring the derivative models into Max up to 10 times faster than before. And I tried it on a couple of models uh, right before this um, this presentation, and, and some complex models that I had. And actually, I'll show you one in a minute. Um, and it, it is a lot faster. I mean, if you tried this in the past, you can link it directly. You, it, Max supports the derivative file format, RBT, directly, or you can just import it. So Integration is a lot better. Uh, enhanced features such as improved instancing, uh, additional bin data, and multiple cameras. That's uh, something that is uh, that's great because uh, in the past it was limited and you had to come up with kind of different alternate workarounds. So what that means, and let me show you because uh, I like to show slides, but let me uh, give you a little taste in terms of uh, looking at 3 Studio Max. So basically. If I open a file for, for Revit, and this is an example, and again, the process for importing and linking is, it hasn't changed. So basically, you can import, uh, a, you can link a Revit file directly or you can import it. Um, in importing, you'll have more and more options. You can export as an SVX and import the SVX. Each option has its own benefits. But um, let me talk to you about some of the enhancements in terms of the workflow between Revit and, and Max which is uh, one of the ones that uh, most people like to leverage because they do have the suite, they have the tool, but they have it shelved, or there's only one guy that knows it in the firm. So why not start leveraging you know, things that would allow you to create better and faster renderings? So, so one of the things that I want to show you is uh, when you import or link the file, one thing that you will notice is the, the usability in terms of finding and highlighting things is uh, a lot smoother. So, so basically, in the past, you have to maybe use the scene selector, so where you can select the properties. Um, right now, if you want to just simply hover over something, it will even tell you what the element is. Uh, you can use the select this, the, the scene selector for elements and type in something like, you know, sofa or stair, and then automatically you will sort out and isolate things. You can right click and select the you know the components are. So within that element, you can select multiple and see the highlighted right on the screen. Um, there is a way that you can also see the Revit property explorer. So that means is within the property, the explorer selection here, you can see a specific areas. Uh, and let me show you what that means. That are related to Revit. And actually, let me just expand here. So what that means is you'll see things such as 
the rabbit category, family level, rabbit type. And again, this has a lot more data. Um, and when you say, when you import now a rabbit file, one of the things that you'll see that is new is uh, a feature called uh, export BIM, in, BIM info. And what that allows you to do is uh, now you can grab an object here. Let me just show you that in a second. In case you need to get additional information, you grab it, select it, and in the properties, you'll see that there is all the data that would typically come out of the rabbit model. And what that means is you have not just the type, family name, et cetera, but even you know what phase was it created, area, length, volume. I mean, you name it. Things that may not be useful or relevant to you, but definitely if you want to track information when you have hundreds and maybe even thousands of elements, um, it allows you to at least double check and, and not have to go between one and the other uh, in Revit. So you can assess what element it is, uh, what element. So uh, an important example is, let's say, the ID. So as you know, Revit has the capabilities to identify in every single element with an ID number. And that allows you to select it no matter how many objects in the model there are. So you can easily isolate it and find out exactly what that ID number is. And you can check it in Max, you can check it in Revit. So definitely uh, more information coming through. There's a lot more data that is, uh, that is um, available here. But one of my favorite ones is this one. It's the camera option, which in the past, it was only supporting one view. Or it was not just that it would support one view, but it would kind of recalculate when you swap between one and the other. Now you can just go to that view specifically and just swap it just like if you were in Revit. So it's, it, it basically retains all the information around the geometry, around the view, within the, uh, the object, and even allows you to select the camera. So if I were to go back into my perspective mode, let me just show you what I mean. All these cameras can even be highlighted and selected. You can see that, and you can you can isolate things by category. I'm just going here reviews, so you can see the different views are basically now a camera, and they're all retained. They're all maintaining the properties that um, that carry over from Reddit. So definitely between the cameras, our multi-camera supported, uh, be able to highlight elements right on the fly. Uh, yes, so being able to highlight something right on the fly. Uh, be able to select the object properties and so forth. Uh, just for one second. That's what happens on a live demo when the driver stops working. <laughs> All right. So what I was saying is uh, definitely between the ability of using, you know, leveraging object properties, highlighting selections, showing the cameras. Actually, you know what? Let's take the opportunity to just restart Max, and you can see while I'm showing some of the features. Um, some of the things that you get introduced when you first launch it. Let me just uh, look at that for a second. All right. So around the sketch, uh, like I mentioned before, one of the things I noticed is uh, the layer, the grouping, and of course the supporting of the new feature, the new uh, 2015 format is uh, one of the newest things. Uh, but I think it's a lot cleaner. I tested it with materials. I tested it with the different layering uh, component within a component, so where you subgroup elements. Uh, and of course, the way that uh, things are uh, categorized by naming. So definitely part of that scene explorer that I was showing you with the property selector, um, that has also have been improved in 2015. And 2015 for SketchUp, that is supported now in, in 3 Studio Max 2016. So, Something that is new, but I can tell you that a lot of people are not aware of or familiar, is the uh, suites workflow. And most, uh, if you do have the suites, uh, especially media and entertainment or the building design, you'll see that uh, from Revit you can send to Showcase, you can send to Max. But something that I wanted to mention, which was improved in 2016, not necessarily the workflow between other applications that are part of the suites. Uh, so if you do have access to tools like Maya, Motion Builder, Modbox, and you will wonder, why would I use Modbox if I'm an architect or an interior designer or, or mechanical engineer? Um, some firms do have access to these tools. And now that uh, there's uh, new ways to access by, in terms of cost through desktop subscription models, where you pay a monthly fee, uh, monthly fee when you just need it, uh, basically now tools like Maya or Maya LT are becoming very affordable, very accessible. And high-end firms typically, or firms that are more creative in terms of what tools they use in their, in their tool set and their practice, 
Um, you can really maximize by leveraging the connection between Max and other tools. And I mentioned the Revit workflow uh, briefly, but uh, I don't know if you knew, but the, you can establish a connection between Max and a target application. In this case, let's say Maya. Maya has some really fantastic features for creating things like rain or, or maybe even some things where you just paint brush um, components that are going to be animated like grass. It's not that you cannot do it in Max, but for instance, I can give you an example for myself. Um, I used to create things like water, like a rainfall, um, where you know in Max it would take a little bit more on particle systems and understanding that type of feature. But uh, in, in Maya, it was very seamless and something that is is great in one tool. Uh, now you can do it, and this has been around for a couple of years, by the way, so it's not new. Um, you can now t leverage these features from other so from other tools. And what is great, it is the connection established between the tools. So it means that while you're in Max, you can make changes in Modbox. And Modbox is a painting uh, tool. So it's a modeling organic uh, sculpting tool that allows you to maybe you know, use brushes to further provide detail to the model that makes it more organic. That might be a lot tougher to do in Revit or Max or CAD. Uh, and then the good thing is they're all live, the connection. So when you change something in Modbox, it goes back to Max. And when you change something in Max, it goes back to Modbox. And it's all live. So it's great the way that um, something like this exists, allowing you to leverage you know, the best of each, each tool. 